Alright, take a seat. That's perfect. Alright. like belts, wrist wraps, shoes, all that stuff. Uh, we've basically chosen sort of our top items that we think people should procure um, when they first get into the sport, uh, kind of based on their practicality for competition purposes, and also just sort of general training um, usefulness, if you will. So, uh, possible things that we could have talked about would be pretty long, because uh, Strongman is very much a uh, gear friendly sport. Uh, most of the time, it's not what is allowed, it's like, is there anything not allowed? Uh, so the list could be pretty long. Um, we want to try to do this like in order, like the most firstest thing you've got to get. Sure. Um, that's arguable, right? Yeah. I would say belt or shoes. Yeah, I definitely say probably maybe shoes and then belt. Whichever one you don't get is yeah. the next one you get. <laughs> You gotta make sure they match. Obviously, for um, fashion purposes. So, so let's talk about uh, belts because theoretically, you could not be wearing weightlifting shoes because you like to squat in a like a box squatty type of style, and that's a valid lifestyle choice. Um, and you like to deadlift and you want to go heavy, blah blah blah. So you get a belt. Um, we have two examples of belts. Um, so let's talk about this one. First. Uh, that is the Spud uh, soft belt. It is multiple layers of kind of heavy duty nylon, like three ish, um, with a Velcro strap. Let me show the waist part of it. Yeah. <laughs> you basically just pull it through the, the D ring and pull it across the other way. Um, you can cinch it on pretty tight. It's not quite the same thing as like a traditional powerlifting belt as far as how hard or stiff or tight it is, but it is probably a little bit more. Uh, oomph than your kind of like Vallejo, you know, little Velcro belt that you might see um, in, in a weightlifting gym or maybe just at Gold's or whatever. So it's a little more substantial than that. It's very flexible, um, which means that uh, it, it kind of bends around the edges a little bit here like this. So it doesn't cut into your power gut as much. Uh, it doesn't like cut down onto your hip as bad. So if you're a deep squatter, you're not gonna get pain in the hole. If you're a fat guy, you're not gonna get weird pinches at the top. Uh, if you're anybody with a body fat over like 12%, it's not gonna pinch as bad when you roll a log over it, or maybe something else like a keg or a stone. Um, and it's just not quite as uh, restrictive, which is kind of has its pros and cons. It's not quite as supportive either. Um, when you want maximum support, what you really want is like a, a power lifting style belt. Um, this is the uh, Enzer. Uh, 13 millimeter uh, forever belt with the lever option. And the lever's nice because when you want to put it on, it's on. When you want to take it off, it's off. Um, if you've ever had a prong belt that's a little tight, hopefully all belts are a little tight, um, and had like a panic attack trying to take it off after a hard set, you'll appreciate how awesome that is. And it's like five or ten extra dollars. Um, there are a lot of companies that make lever belts. Uh, I've just been a fan of Enzer for many, many years. Um, okay. I, Other benefits for lever for strongman, I like it because a lot of times you have to wear your buckle to the back. Um, and it's much easier to buckle yourself in or have somebody get you out of your belt um, when it is a lever belt. Jason can attest to having to pull me out of a prong belt while I am having some sort of panic attack. I'm facing my own belt, super fucking tight. Yes. So much easier from that perspective. Worth um, five dollars. Yes, definitely worth the five dollars. Although I do know that some people okay. prefer to have a prong because they wear it on different tightnesses depending on different lifts. Some people um, like cucumbers pickled. <laughs> but again, if you're on the fence, go with the lever belt because it's very convenient, um, especially for strongman events where you feel like you're going to puke, pass out, or die. 
um, when you complete it, you're set. So soft belt is really good on the puke continuum because it's just a lot right. less puke inducing. So like if you're gonna do a medley and but you want some kind of support, soft belt's really nice. You can still breathe in it. Um, if you want, uh, you know, like full on hardcore support, but you want to be able to escape quickly, leave your belt all the way. Yep. Um, the Inzer is not a cheap brand, so this is like it's like a hundred bucks now. Mm -hmm. um, this is a very simple piece of equipment, machines. It's very hard to break. I've really never seen anybody break them. I've, I've heard stories, um, but uh, the first gym that I ever really uh, worked out on with a lot of power lifters and stuff. There were versions of this belt that were probably 20 years old, just like hanging up on the wall that like, you know, they, they are forever belts. And if you do break them, you can send them back in and get them fixed for free, so. And there are different thicknesses. So Jason and I both have the 13, which is the uh, thickest one that they come in. Uh, I just personally prefer a thicker belt. If you want a hard belt, yeah, you should go all out. But, uh, but there are tens. Um, I know some women prefer the 10 because it's not sort of as, uh, bruise inducing and uncomfortable, uh, but I actually prefer the 13 because it is more sportive. Another good company for belts like these, uh, the, uh, what does Scott have? Best Belts. The Best Belt. Uh, what I will say for best is they ask you to take your waist measurement and then they make a belt where your waist is like exactly halfway between like the biggest hole and the smallest hole. Um, so you can grow or you can shrink a little bit and it'll still fit. And it comes right out of the shop, like broken in, soft, uh, ready to wear. Most traditional powerlifting belts come out very stiff at first, and you kind of have to break them in for a year or two. <laughs> and that's, yeah. that's, that's where the bruising comes in that Gabby was alluding to. Speaking of things that bruise, <laughs> shoes? No, nice that's, that, no, that's more of like a rhyming. Yeah. You know? All right, shoes. Um, so we're skipping right to weightlifting shoes, but it should be stated that there are a lot of shoes in Strongman. Um, having a good pair of lightweight, flat, uh, low shoes, uh, whether it's chucks um, or something that's more of like a functional fitness shoe that's really lightweight, it's probably going to be good for most of the events yeah. that don't call for an explicit shoe. Um, and most of the events that do call for an explicit shoe would be I guess clean and press stuff, usually you're probably going to want weightlifting shoes. Um, a deadlift thing, you're, you're going to want something flat and hard, or maybe no shoes if you're allowed. Um, but everything else, like you could have like a lightweight, low, sort of like functional shoe or like athletic shoe, something like a... I have the, the Nanos, which I really like because they're flexible, they're a little bit grip, grippy, but they're still flat. Um, those are my preferred sort of moving event shoe. Yeah. I wear these to deadlift because they're adorable, they're polka dot chunks, you can't see them. Um, <laughs> that's the main merit of them. And then weightlifting shoes I like for all things pressing and I also like them for loading events because I am short so I will take any height advantage I can get. So the reason that the, that powerlifting belt uh, really needs to be at the top of the list is for training purposes. Like yes, you need it for competition and for events. Um, there are certain things that you probably should never really bother doing heavy without a belt. Um, maybe the yeah. farmer's walks up there, but yo for sure. Um, and maybe, you know, the deadlifts, especially the partial ranges of motion that are going to be usually way heavier than normal, like an 18 inch deadlift or a truck tire deadlift. Um, those things you probably are going to wear a belt most of the time, but even in training, just doing squats and, and other exercises, uh, there's a ton of benefits to the belt. Same thing with the shoes. Um, so like a clean and press, like a log axle clean and press type of event, you probably want weightlifting shoes because the movements mimic weightlifting so much. But uh, in training too, you're like depending on your squatting style, you could probably end up relying very heavily on weightlifting shoes. I think a lot of smart people have argued that the front squat is probably equally important to the back squat um, in training for strongman. And I think that you're definitely gonna get your best results front squat training with weightlifting shoes. Um, unless you're just very, very flexible. Um, and I think most of the guys coming into Strongman aren't yogis, you know? Uh, so it would, be, it would be dumb to skip uh, the chance to take weightlifting shoes. So uh, we brought out two brands or styles or whatever. This is the Nike uh, Romaleo. Um, this is the type of thing that, um, I don't know, Lu Xiaoju or uh, Dmitry Klokov is gonna be wearing on an Olympic stage. This is probably the best of the best, really. Um, and they, they cost it, about, about $200. Yep. Um, these, are, these are mine. Um, 
this is the only the second pair of weightlifting shoes I ever bought. My first pair of weightlifting shoes lasted me almost 10 years, and they were a cheap Chinese um, brand that shall go unnamed. <laughs> Um, but anyways, they were actually really tough, um, and I wore them on the platform, and that's it. And because of its limited use, I mean, they lasted a pretty long time. Um, eventually, the sole started to come off, and I, <laughs> I started to accidentally do like the real splits when I was doing split jerks, uh, so I needed to upgrade. Uh, the Roma Leos are pretty high heel, uh, a lot of arch support. Um, a lot of external support, you can see that it kind of ridges up on the side and it has dual straps. The lateral straps basically create stability from left to right. When you go to two straps, you just get a little more stability. So these shoes I would consider like fucking tanks. Um, if you do something like a split jerk, when your feet touch the ground, they're not going anywhere. They're not rolling left to right, they're not sliding forward and back. And if your shoe is nice and tight, your foot's not moving inside it either. Um, so a lot of control, a lot of stability with these. Um, not a lot of comfort. <laughs> Weightlifting shoes generally aren't known for their comfort. Um, I like to actually kind of order on the tight side just to make sure that I have you know that stability. But that means that I don't. You know these these do have some meshy parts, but for the most part, it's all leather. Uh, it's very heavy and it's hot as shit in there. Um, Another very popular brand right now would be the Reebok uh, lifters. These are the 1.0s, or these are the 1.0 pluses. Yeah. Um, so these are like two models back. Uh, this is one of the girls in the gym. You can see they have an unorthodox material for the heel, but they still have the same basic shape um, as the Romaleo. A little bit less lateral support here, but two lateral straps, which is nice and tight. What was really cool about this mark was the U-form technology, and I've seen, I remember shoes like this when I was a kid, um, but you literally put them in the oven and bake them at a low temperature for like 20 minutes when you first get them, and they melt a little bit, and then you put your foot in, and it shapes around your foot. These have, like, these have been like the most comfortable weightlifting shoes I've ever worn, and performance-wise, they really work pretty good. I like the fact that the toe box is really flexible, and it's like, this whole area is cut off a little separately. That's really good for split jerkers. And I know a lot of very serious strongmen who actually prefer the old uh, Reebok CrossFit like lifters because they, it was great for like tire flips and stuff like that. You got a lot of big traction up here. So like for something like a medley or anything, they were actually very fond of that. Um, there's a lot of tacky rubber on the bottom and it actually works really well for traction. The reason I bring these up as a second model too is, um, is Reebok. Uh, so they have like an outlet store um, in some podunk ass town near you probably. Um, they have sales online all the time. Yep. Um, they do a big heavy marketing push with affiliates, you know, who like publish coupon codes and stuff like that. I, I know some. Um, so you often get the opportunity to buy these at an extra 20 to 40% off um, and they often go on sale. Um, I bought a pair of the newest lifters. Um, at an outlet store in the middle of South Carolina. Um, and shoes that were normally 150, which is a, on the higher end, you know, it's, it's a reasonable price for like a well-made weightlifting shoe, um, but it's more expensive than like some of the cheap, like kind of Chinese brands and stuff. Uh, it was normally $150, they marked it down to like 100 or something like that because it was at the outlet store. And then the outlet was having like a 40% off sale or something like that. So I got those lifters for like 70 bucks and that happens all the time. So if you want to get, if you're worried about money and you want to have an affordable first shoe uh, and, a, and a comfortable one that's pretty easy to find, you might actually be able to go to a store and try on different sizes. Um, check out the Reebok. It'll make it really easy to buy your first pair. Um, Reebok, highly accessible. If you're looking for something akin to the Romaleos, but um, Romaleos, I believe, are better for wider feet. Um, Adidas also makes a very nice high-end weightlifting shoe that I've heard nothing but great things about. Um, but there are some other brands that make weightlifting shoes as well. Innovate. Or, I want to try the Innovates. Yeah. Those look the really cool. They're, they're, like, they're very awesome. lightweight um, and very flexible up in the toe box. So it might be a really good, again, a good, a good shoe for something like a tire flip or a medley or a press medley. We were talking shoes when the battery died. Away. Yep, so I hope you guys learned a lot about shoes. Moving on. So. Moving on. Straps. <laughs> we uh we chose we chose to include straps too because one they're really cheap, so that'll be an easy way to get them. And um, two, you, you you're gonna like lose a competition if somebody else is using straps and you don't. 
Uh, and three, uh, that you can train with them for a bunch of shit. Yes. Um, not unlike belts, straps are cheating, uh, and they don't count on the internet. But um, if you like to do accessory exercises like rows or uh, RDLs or pull-ups that rely on the grip, but you're actually really fucking strong compared to internet fucktards, um, you might actually need straps to um, to hold on to things long enough for you to get your bro pump on. Um, so I like that aspect of owning straps. Yes. So Gabby's got some black straps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are like longer black straps. They're basically like uh, seatbelt material. These are. Uh, actually from lift big eat big. I don't know if they make these anymore. Um, I don't mind these straps. They are nice and long which is great if you are doing something on an axle. So I've got really tiny baby hands so I may be a bad point of reference for this but I've got plenty of room here to sort of wrap around a barbell or a thick axle if needed. Jason's straps are more think, like weightlifting style straps. Yeah I think I got these at Iron Mind a while ago. Um, but the upside here, there's no uh, like a slip knot enclosure. It's just it's just a eye loop. Um, it's very easy to take on and off very fast. And again, these are pretty short and small, and they're really intended, I think, for like high repetition snatch work. Um, you know, when you start to chew up your hook grip, you can use these. And when when the when your lift goes overhead, it can come on, out very easily. So uh, weightlifting straps are always very short, so if you want to ditch a snatch behind you, you're not going to rip your arms out of the socket because you can't let go of the bar. This will allow you to let go of the bar real quick. And what I learned um, in, in my first show where I had like a deadlift for rep thing is these did not hold on for 15, 20 reps. Um, you know, they come loose after two or three really quick. So you really want something like that, um, especially something that has kind of a chewier texture and kind of holds itself. Uh, so you don't yeah. you don't have to retie your straps in the middle of a 60 second period. Yeah, because that is sort of very annoying. Um, and also, if you're going to use straps in competition, use straps in training. The day to be <laughs> is not the day to learn how to use some fucking straps what? because it will suck. Yeah. Um, straps feel very awkward. It may seem like it's no big deal, uh, but it drastically sort of changes things. These ones hurt. These um, chew your wrists up to shit, and your wrists will bleed, and you look. <laughs> Yeah, it's all like double layered right here, and it's kind of like, again, it's a nylon-y thing, so I guess they burn it, it's got like a hard plastic yeah. edge. Um, you gotta get used to it, because it does kind of cut in a little bit. There are leather straps that Rogue makes that a couple of people who train here really, really like. Those are quite nice, they do not chew up your wrists. Leather stretches though. It does stretch. So, like, it, it depends on how much you're deadlifting. Uh, if you're deadlifting 300 pounds, you might not notice. But if you're doing like 600 plus, like the leather lengthens, and so your grip actually gets worse after that first rep. Um, so that kind of sucks. But still, leather straps. is soft and nice, and uh, it's really grippy. Yeah. So straps, get you some. Buy them. These Practice. used to be like you know all the cool kids. This is like gold standard. I think that they were twelve dollars. Yeah. So. I think mine were maybe fifteen to twenty, um, and I think the rogue you ones. Got scammed. You got those for free, didn't you? No, I, I think I bought them. I'm pretty okay. sure I paid somebody for them. Up next on the list, wrist wraps. Um, because for whatever reason, people sometimes confuse mm. straps and wraps. These are not those. Wraps. Um, these shorties uh, came from Road. These are pretty comfortable. Um, these are also like $12. They're pretty easy to put on um, because they're short and the material's uh, kind of an elastic. Uh, I kind of grew up on, I guess, the more traditional powerlifting wraps, which you gotta know what you want them for. Um, but the powerlifting wraps are, are meant for bench pressing like a lot of weight, uh, far more than I ever did. Um, and so, quick comparison, these are from, uh, these are from Titan, I think, or... Uh, yeah, Titan. And uh, I've had these for a long time. Um, they are... Uh, I don't know, these are like 80 centimeters as opposed to those like 50 or 60. Um, and they're a little bit, they're a little bit thicker all around. And having the extra length means I can wrap it around the wrist one or two more times and I can completely immobilize the wrist. So if I were gonna put, this is why I don't wear them anymore, the Velcro is dead. But if I were gonna put uh, a massively huge bench press into my palm, like I can't move my wrist much, I'm just stuck in this position. Which is um, honestly still kind of what I would want uh, 
for like a circus dumbbell, something like that, this would be great. Any other time I'm gonna clean and jerk a bunch, um, like an axle yeah. or a log, I don't know if I would want to be just completely wrapped up like a mummy. Yeah, I've got ones that are similar to the Rogue, they're from Hyperforce. Uh, I really, really like them. I've been using them for the log because I am super flexy, so I can bend my wrist very, very far back, which is not a great thing when you're trying to stabilize a heavy log overhead. I also have some cloth wraps, uh, they're the strength wrap brand. Um, you've probably seen all over the internet via CrossFit videos. Uh, I like those for things like Axel, where I want a lot of wrist flexibility and I need just a little bit of support. Particularly if I'm doing something for reps, where I don't want sort of the circulation being cut off in my hand for a long time. Yeah, that was something I kind of learned through experience. Again, uh, when I was taught how to use wraps, it was really in the context of like a one rep max in a bench press. And so every single time I would ever put on a wrap, I would do this. Like this. Just like Milatichev does. <laughs> right? And so swollen. Yeah, and my hand would turn purple, right? And then I started doing um, every minute on the minute shirts, and I started doing uh, axle clean and press for reps and stuff, and I realized uh, I could not do that. So now I've figured out, you know, trial and error, just how to, how to put it on just tight enough and below the wrist joint to where there's a little bit of compression, like there's a little squeeze right here, which slows down the inevitable like sort of carpal tunnel that I'm going to get from pounding on this type of joint a million times. Uh, but I can still move everything around and uh, my hand doesn't turn purple. Uh, what I don't like about wearing wraps the whole time is uh, you, you get them sweaty, which means that they start to stink really yep. fast. And the longer wraps are also really nice for a circus dumbbell or log that's very uncomfortable. I get like huge bruises from the log and circus dumbbell you usually want a little bit extra wraps sort of all the way down i will wrap with both of my wraps on my pressing arm um, because it tears you up and it hurts like shit and that is something you don't need to be dealing with when you're trying to put a giant awkward thing overhead for 60 seconds strongman is the uh the the only strength sport where there's very few rules and restrictions regulations on equipment usage so you could literally do what Gavin said. You could put a tight wrist like wrap here, and then you could do a loose one down the arm and like protect yourself from a hard edge. Um, you can wrap your fucking elbow. You can uh, elbow sleeve. You can wear you can wear a sleeve. You can wear a wrap on your elbow though, mm -hmm. uh, and like you can get a power lifting knee wrap and put it around your elbow, and it's going to give you a lot of spring um, in locking out the elbow. Last piece of equipment, again chosen because it's very affordable, um, the tape. We'll do a lot of what, uh, what we just talked about with wrist wraps. Um, I have started to realize that just put a little chalk or baby powder on and tape my wrist um, is probably just as effective as wearing wrist wraps. And then I just take them off and throw them away. Uh, I used to do that back in the day. Um, coming from like a, a judo jiu-jitsu background, everybody has this for like their broken fingers and stuff. Um, and it was just always cheap and easy. But at, at one point I realized that, you know, a $3.99 a roll eventually <laughs> Going through all these rolls of tape was more expensive than just buying a, a 10 or 15 dollar pair of wrist wraps. Um, so that's a good example of like I started one way, I kind of grew into another way, and now I'm back again to where I started. Um, you're also going to need these for stone training, probably. Yes. Just wrapping up the whole forearm. There's a whole technique to that. I'm sure that would make a wonderful video someday. Uh, we can talk about how to tape that. arms. <laughs> yeah. You see some funny shit um, at yeah. competitions. You see some really interesting tape and tacky application methods. Different we'll types. Surely make a video on of tape, <laughs> uh, like electrical tape or duct tape. Duct tape. Um, different types of uh, tacky, uh, different uh, methods of <laughs> application, what have you. But anyways, uh, do yourself a favor and buy a box of like the high quality clothy, like Johnson and Johnson or Mueller, like athletic tape. Um, Buy in bowl, <laughs> order yeah. from Amazon or whatever, because you know, you know, you're always, you're always going to be. There's always something that you can use it for. Yeah, um, I actually. Your hands very helpful. I, actually, um, I tape. Yeah. yeah, you could tape your thumb or hook grip. Um, I actually tape my fingers and I tape them into a flexed position, and I cover like a lot of the sort of surface, uh, touching surfaces of my fingers with the tape, um, for stuff like kegs, and I hope that promoters don't notice.